Welcome to The Journey Principles, where we show you how to go from stuck to unstoppable with life strategies that work. Now, here's your host and creator of the Transform You Framework, Stephen Scoggins. Hey guys, welcome back to The Journey Principles. So glad you're here. Uh, about to jump into some pretty exciting topics. Uh, actually, one of Connor's favorites I'm pretty excited about as well. If this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, the entire show is about helping you go from stuck to unstoppable, which means going from not being able to make progress to finally to make consistent progress on a regular basis with life strategies that are simple and that actually work. Um, at the end of each show, you should get no less than three to five things that you can actually do today to make something happen in your own life and kind of keep you moving forward. In the meantime, welcoming my uh, co-host here, Connor Kraft, Director of Connections here at the Journey Principles Institute. What's up, buddy? How you What's doing? What's up, man? Good, dude. So, how you been? I've been good. So, I'm just helping my dad with some some uh, work around the house still. Oh, yeah? You know? Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, we're trying to tidy everything up and get everything in order, so. Yeah, you're going gonna to come out and move out my way? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know you if we're your money or, 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 or what, but uh, that's why we live I, out I know that. that <laughs> yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, your place is awesome. I love how it's like out in the country, and it's uh, it, but it's not too far removed from everything. Yeah. So, and, uh, like Connor's that. also been learning how to use nail guns and saws and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I forgot to even talk about that. I went to his house, and uh, yeah, I guess we haven't talked about that yet. But uh, <laughs> he taught me how to use a saw, guys. I was so concerned. I was like, dude, I need my fingers for typing and playing piano <laughs> and all this stuff. Please, yeah. I'm not a handyman, but but I learned how to do it. It was great. Yeah. So what what was your uh, what what did you enjoy most about watching me actually do the construction trade that I talk about so often? I liked the learning because I'm, yeah. I'm I'm just wired for that, so I, I just enjoy learning new things. So like once Connor I got scared over the crap out of me while he was running <laughs> across the floor, shaking the, the scaffold I built. I'm standing 14 feet in the air, yeah, and he's like true. running across the floor. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to make you fall for I sure. I didn't manage to shoot my shoot myself with a nail That's gun. That's right, dude, dude. This guy, <laughs> this is crazy. This guy is such a trooper. He literally shot himself in the thumb with a nail gun. It was an accident. D Yes, of course it was an accident. The, the nail, the nail hit a, a knot in the wood and sh shot up. But I'm, what shot. I'm saying is, is like, he, he took off this glove and there was just blood pouring out. I, I don't mean to be too graphic, but like, <laughs> but like I was like, dude, like, are you okay? Do we need to go? And he's like, no, no, no. And he was already looking like, all right, here's the next thing we need to do. I was like, bro, what are you, what are you doing? I just grabbed a napkin and some electrical tape. And yeah, got it, it fixed wild. up. But uh, I've, it's not obviously it's clearly not the first time that that's happened. Um, yeah, I mean you've you've shared some pretty gruesome <laughs> in injuries with me i'm like dude dang you've really earned your uh your keep yeah uh anything else exciting happened last week uh i am dating someone new officially officially so he's officially off the market yes i'm officially off the market i'll keep it private for both of our our privacy but yeah. um but yes i am in a relationship now so, so what, how do you like that I like it. I mean, I, I had been like three years of essentially being being by myself and you well, know having what, that but time. But you did a lot but, of work in that three years. Yeah, I did. You're, I, you're I, not I, the same kid that I met four years I ago. Came a long way for sure. Um, yeah, a few years back, I had a not so great relationship. So yeah. So so um, what's it like to go from a not so great relationship and then doing the work to get to the relationship that well, makes? What's interesting is is like I didn't even identify that this this relationship that I was in prior was so bad until I like recently got in this new one. I was like, wait, everything's so easy. Yeah. We're not fighting all the time. Yeah. And I mean, obviously it's still fresh and new. And he said, give it six months. <laughs> <laughs> well, the six months is the honeymoon phase. I mean, that's when right. that's that's when everybody has their their best their best of themselves up in front historically. Yeah. And then, you know, then you know, that's what, like, in fact, I remember this. It's like, um, what's the old adage? Honey, what can I do for you? And then, you know, you can take out the garbage. Oh, yeah, no problem. No, I'll, I'll do it right now. And you drop what you're doing. You go take out the garbage six months from now. So Honey, man, I how can you have taken out the garbage? <laughs> like, it's, I ain't doing that. I'm just watching TV, right? Yeah, like yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's comfort level. Why is that, though? Like, why don't people just maintain that Man, initial... I wish I could answer that question. But I should you? Let's just quick side note. I think shouldn't you try to treat I think them the same should, way think, that, yeah, that you're from my trying perspective, I think you should just be who you're going to be. Yeah. Um I'm going to give you a little a little tidbit on love, my perspective on love. By the way, guys, this relation this podcast is about relationships. Yeah, so so this this is relevant. Yeah. We're not going off on too <laughs> too far of a tangent. Um my adage on love is true love is not loving somebody for who they are. True love is learning some is loving someone in spite of who they are. What I mean by that is, 
It's easy Which for... Which sounds so... I always heard that and was like, it's, that so, it sounds so morbid. It's like... Well, I don't mean it morbidly. What I mean... I think what I mean most by it is I mean that... In fact, actually, I kind of learned this from Karen. Our very, very first date. In fact, I, we didn't do a whole podcast on how we met. It's just yeah, let's not go off on but, too far. Of a tangent, but I will but. tell you, our first date, um, we'd had a, a long phone conversation the night before, before we ever scheduled the date. We were going to do coffee, then I want to do sushi, and then she sits down. She gets there a little bit late. Um, of course, I have a, like a little romantic setup set up because I was like really interested in her. Mm-hmm. Uh, she sits down, and the first thing she does is give me your dirty. That's so like. When I, when I heard that that's yeah. how she opened, I was like, ooh. I, I actually, it, it actually made me excited, but. I know, because that's the way that you are. <laughs> I'm like, weird. dude, anyone else would be like, what? Well, look, because I like real. Like, I like authentic. Give I like authenticity. I like. So give, know. basically, give me all she's your like, your She's baggage, like, I don't want, I don't want to hear how much money you make. I don't want to hear what kind of car, car you drive. I don't want to, I don't want to hear about all the places you've been. I want to hear about the stuff that I'm going to find out about six months, whether we're dating or not dating anyway. Um. You know, and we actually had a really good conversation about that. Is that and typically healthy to do that? To, I, it was for us. First I, date. I, I, I know it works for us. you. I just think that typically you don't well, want to bring up all that baggage. Well, right I think away. for us, so a, a couple different things. First of all, I was um, I was in my late thirties when Karen and I met, and she was in her early to mid thirties when we met, and um, we both wanted. An actual marriage. Yeah. Well, well I mean, we, yeah, you we guys both, were at that point. We where were, you were in both a season committed. where we both wanted the same thing. You weren't is, about messing around. Yeah. So right. I think that that conversation's great if that's the season you're on. That's true. I also think that it's important to let someone know early on what season you're in. Like, oh, yeah. I see sure. a lot of people who are like, I just met the most wonderful person. And I'm like, okay, are you guys on the same page? Like, well, you know, I'm. I want to get married. Like, I, w- I really want to be married. And the other one. And the other one's like, yeah, I think. Oh, I'm thinking like two years out, three years out. And the, and the other person's like, oh, once they get around me and hang around me, they're gonna want to. Ma-. Like, it's <laughs> like I'm like, you're stupid. Don't do that. Yeah. I mean, lack of a better word. Idea. I mean, that's no. That's not. foolishness, is what it is. So. But that's why communication is important. And yeah. As long as you're both communicating and you're like, okay, do we? If proceed? you're in a dating phase and what you're gonna be doing is dating for the next three years to kind of figure out what you really want, what you don't mm-hmm. want, and all this kind of stuff, then that's probably not a conversation you have. But for what we were at in the season of life we were at, it was it was an important one. The next thing she said was just as was just as good, and she said, uh, she goes, by the way, I've been on a lot of these dates recently. And no one's made it past date number two. And Dang, dude, putting all the pressure on you. Well, too. so I think, <laughs> and so I think this is one of the exciting things because I think this is one of the things that actually uh, caused us to kind of like each other because we had this little edginess to us. Mm. As I said, totally get it. What are you doing tomorrow? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and we li- we literally went on a date the next day at the art really? museum. Really? That's amazing. Yeah, I, I got I took her to the art museum in Raleigh, and then um. Got a uh, picnic basket and so you 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 just hit her right back with that dude respect that's yeah. awesome yeah well I'm like I said we were <laughs> we were both in that season of life we we're ready to do that so anyway that's a quick relationship story today we're talking about the seven relationships you must have or you need in order to win at life I love this topic right I've identified um, seven areas seven archetypes if you will of relationships you've got to have to keep you moving forward to take you from stuck to unstoppable that aren't going to get you bound up because so often I can tell you that I miss probably six years of um, great pivotal time for me to make progress because I was in relationships that were not serving me mm. and I stayed there f- way too long and I guarantee you if I said hey have you ever stayed in a relationship way too long I guarantee you most of them like uh, yeah I've at least once right it's a learning lesson something we all go through but out of that, I have identified the seven archetypes that I think make the most sense to have in your relationships. And I will say these when we're going through these archetypes in just a couple of minutes, consider that you may have one or more key relationships that may um, suffice or be two or three of these archetypes rolled up into one. So these are just types of people yeah. that you need. Exactly. And it, that'll become could, more clear when we start yeah. going through them. They could, them. Be, seven. Understand. They could right. be seven separate people or they could be four people that have the archetypes. Dif- of, different characteristics exactly. of these. So right. if I, for example, you guys have heard me talk about Steve Myrick and even my wife Karen on a regular basis. Um, both of them serve in multiple areas of the archetypes. Right. Does that make sense? I'm excited. Let's dive in. All right, cool. Um, well, before I do that, I want to make, make sure everybody understands You'll never be able to win a war internally or externally unless you have the right troops beside you. 
Okay. The reason I say that's important is because when we're breaking down these archetypes, seriously take a look at your relationships. And I, I caught how you said war there because it is I a mean, war. It, essentially it is you are at battle with the world and the universe and it feels like that sometimes yeah. especially when you've been stuck for a long time it's like yeah. who do i have to fight i mean i will, not necessarily who but like yeah. like it feels like the world is against you and it feels yeah. like you're fighting against the universe in order to make progress and you'll make a little bit of progress and then you'll fall back three steps yeah. you'll take one step forward three steps back yeah. and it just i know what that's like it's miserable well, and that's why and that's why i'm saying you've, you've the biggest mistake that i think people make in their relationships is they're not truly objective Okay. Think about all the people that you watch me coach or, um, or even when we're teaching our life strategist right now, right? Getting them ready for the, the tribe and the audience. One of the things that we do that I'm on them about more than anything else is they've got to break that spirit, if you will, within someone who is just like, well, I can change them. I can save them. I can, I can, no, 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 no. You're responsible for your journey and that person's responsible for their journey. Okay. If you spend all your time babysitting their journey, you can't focus on your journey, which means you're doing missionary style. Which we talked about in the last podcast, right? you know, a drowning person can't save a drowning person. Correct. And if you surround yourself with people who are not in such a great place before you've really hit that mastery level where mm -hmm. you can handle it, it's going to bring you down. Yeah. And so you, we're going to give you the tools to, to make that happen. You don't have to write somebody off. You just need to create some distance between people that aren't serving you. Yeah. And that's okay. And it should be okay. Like you I will tell you right now that some of the people that I had to distance myself with early on were my family members. Yeah. Okay. It's not that I didn't love them because I did. It's not that I didn't want what's best for them because I did. It's not that I didn't want them to be where I was at or heading on the same journey that I was on because I did. Mm -hmm. It was because unfortunately those relationships, if I spent all of my time with them, it have been more like wearing cinder block shoes. Right. Right. It just makes it harder to take a step. OK. What we're saying here when we dig into these seven archetypes is do your best to choose relationships in your inner circle that serve you so you can get far enough along so you can get the equipment or equipping and the spirit it takes to then go back and serve the person. You've heard us say it before. The greatest person, one of the greatest per things you'll ever do in your life, purposes in your life, is serving the person you used to be. Okay, we've talked about that before, a hundred percent. Remember that in order to do that, you've got to become something greater, and that in order to do that, you're gonna have to have these relationships. So, you ready to jump into them? Yeah, for sure. All right, number one was probably the easiest one we've talked about before: the guide. The guide. Okay, guide, aka the mentor. Okay, this is someone who is already on the, he's already, he or she has already been on the journey you're on. They've already had the experiences. They've already had the lessons. They've already had the testing and they already have the knowledge that they can give you to keep you moving forward. Okay. These, these people are specifically there to give you the knowledge, wisdom, and experience it's going to take to keep, keep going. Okay. The next one's the coach. Okay. Consider, uh, think about it. So when you think about a, a football coach, what do you think? Or any kind of coach? What, 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 kind, of, what kind of character traits do you, think, do you think they have? Um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know about character traits. Like, it's kind of hard for me to pinpoint. But, like, I, I actually picture, like, it's weird because I, I kind of picture a coach, like, yelling at his, uh, his mm -hmm. team, but yelling in a positive way, like mm -hmm. yelling, like, come on guys, like, get that yeah. hustle, you know, keep, keep, keep it going. Like, yeah. like that type of thing. Like it, it's, it's essentially, it's equipping them with the tools that, uh, that they need and the skills that they need is kind of how mm -hmm. I look at it. Um, so if you're like a football coach, you know, your job is essentially to manage the team and help them get ready for the game. Yeah. So when I consider a coach, I like to think about the movie, remember the Titans. Okay. Mm -hmm. The reason I like that movie is because you had two different, distinctly different types of coaches. You've got the one that is the grinder who's yelling in your ear, we're going to change the way we play. We're going to change the way we think yeah. and eat. And, you know, and then you've got the other one who's like more of a more of a slow pay strategist kind of thing. Like, um, let, let me encourage you along the way. When we're talking coach in this capacity, we're talking the attributes of those both of those coaches together. So in, at times... They're the ones, and like uh, Coach Boone in the movie is like popping Petey on the head, right? He's 
if you drop this football one more time, how many feet in a mile? You're going to run every last one of them, right? Yeah. They're blunt. They're direct. They're they're pushing you. They're driving you. They're 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 really kind of pushing. At the same time, the other coach in the movie, um, and I, his name escapes me for the at the moment, and, I'm, and I apologize for people who love that movie. I love the movie too, by the way. Um, but uh, there's a moment in the movie where he goes to one of the football players and says, "Look, you can do better. Like I believe in you." And then later on, he's like, "Run the ball," kind of thing. But it's a balancing act. It's a balancing act. But their whole goal is to is to bring excellence out of you. So what's the difference between that and a guide? A guide is strictly going to be more like Yoda, right? Think, I like Yoda as, the perf- as an example, or Gandalf, okay? They may have the encouraging words or the, or the one-drop wisdom sentences or something like that, but for the most part, the guide is strictly there for knowledge and wisdom, mm. right? A coach is, there, is, is largely there for motivation, Right, they're they're there to push you past your limits. Right, a guide is going to give you the is going to tell you what you need to know, the steps you need to take. But they're probably going to be so far removed, we're not able to help you actually take those steps. A coach is going to be like right beside you, run the ball, take the step, run the lap, right, kind of deal, or going to be the the motivational speech when you need it most, when you when you're down six points and and during the half, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So that to me, that's that's the difference between the two. One is more of a motivator and pusher, a driver, if you will, and the other person is more of a. You guys are you guys are probably going to notice some overlap between some of these, and that's why we we like to say that you know there can obviously be four people who have these traits. Um, There are slight kind of differences in some of these things, but there are also some similarities. Yep. Um, The next one's going to be the empower. Okay, so when I'm thinking empower, uh, the person that comes to my mind would be my grandfather. So my grandfather Stallings that passed away 2016, that was a huge part of my spiritual upbringing, if you will. He was the kind of person who, even even when I knew that I made some a lot of mistakes and I screwed up a lot, he wouldn't bring that stuff up. Instead, he would be telling me what I could be. So his job is to lift you up. His job is to lift you up. And keep your head up. Right? And that's what the Empower does. The Empower can be a best friend. The empower can be a parent. The empower can be anybody that Mm. consistently just sees more potential in you than you see in yourself. And they're just, and all they do is they're constantly reminding you of it. You can be, you you got this. You're going to be amazing. Keep going. Right. Whereas whereas the guide's teaching you how to get there. The coach is kind of like saying, take the step, blowing the whistle, make you do the burpees and everything like that. Right. There's a, they're more about walking you through the process. Right. The empower is kind of that encouragement. It's that word of encouragement when you need it most. It's the the time where you've been struggling for a long time, you're a long time, you're a long time, and you're about to give up, and that person comes in, and they just have the the one-liner, right, right that just changes everything. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Um, so that's, that's the empower. The next one's the educator. Yeah. Okay. The educator is, think about your high school, like a high school teacher. Right. Okay. They're in... They're not really there to motivate you. They're not really there to necessarily give you life experience. Yeah, they're not necessarily – the difference between a guide and an educator is the guide is kind of doing it and has done it. Yeah. So it's a mentorship role. The educator is purely teaching you knowledge. Knowledge and the tactical – and the the tactability behind it. Okay. Right? So um, when you're learning uh, math or calculus, right, there's a methodology that's learned. They teach you the methodology, and then they watch you practice. Right. And then they grade you on it. Right? So there's a measurement standard. Um, so if, uh, a lot of times our, our um, life mastery strategists that we have, right, Evan and Mike and some of these other guys and gals, um, they're more of empowering educators. Right. Okay? Um, their, their job is to help you take the step with the tactical step that's next in line. Okay? Their job is not to give you all four phases of the growth framework that just rolled up in the transform you. That's not their goal, right? They know it. We've been teaching it. Right. They understand it. But their goal is, is the next step, right. right? My role as the guide is teaching you the theology, the philosophy, the strategy to take the steps. So Okay, I see. So the educator <clears throat> is essentially giving you the knowledge and equipping you with the knowledge and information you need to move forward where you are today. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Exactly. Um, the next be gonna, books too. It yeah, doesn't necessarily have yeah, to be exactly. like a physical person. You could read a book and exactly. that counts so as an educator. In this day and age, 
let's 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 hit on that for a second. In this day and age, a relationship could very easily be digital, of course, or yeah. written in nature. Tons of influencers out there, right? Yeah. There's then now again go back to our last episode. There's a way in which to choose which influencers you're following. Yeah. So you don't get yourself in trouble. We have five character traits that are very very important. Or I says yep. I suppose five filters that you need to use. Yep. Uh, when selecting is this someone. person this scale of one to ten exactly. is this person this scale of yep. one to ten that kind of deal um the next one's the driver the driver does not care about your feelings they don't care they don't care about anything other than pushing you forward okay um the person that comes to mind as a driver for me in some cases would be my wife <laughs> <laughs> so is a driver like a personal trainer almost like or is that more of a more of a coach uh you know there is a little bit of an overlap, but I, I think a trainer is going to be more in the in the in the form of a driver. The gotcha. reason being is a coach is there to help you make the play, is to help you see the things you're not seeing. They're they're the coaches to me are operating more in strengths and blind spots. Okay, and then a driver is just to push you forward. It's, it's to just push to you. push you to develop those strengths and yeah. and overcome that. Like, like come on, one more rep, one more set. Let's exactly. go. Like, like and that. they and they but, just. I can't. I yeah, can't. yeah. I don't care. Do it anyway. Like yeah, you know right. that kind Which of thing. Which the coach can act like that sometimes, but the mm-hmm. coach is also obviously with the tactical. And yeah, strategy. I mean, if I was to ask you what what the probably the one of the 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 biggest driver in Journey Principles would be, you guys would probably say my name because I'm constantly pushing it forward. Oh yeah. So I uh, we butt heads sometimes because yeah. I'm like, hey, slow down, let's do this right. And you're like, let's go. We're gonna we need to do it right now. <laughs> we're, we're gonna get it done. And, and I mean, you just genuinely have so much passion about this project. Yeah. Um. And I, you just you move at a million. Well, miles you know, an hour. do you know why? Every day that we're not ready, or every day that we're not where we're at, another person's struggling. Every yeah. single day, every single day, we're not able to get a piece of content out on time, or. Um, to give the free content to the email subscribers or uh, do a podcast or get our content order or get our online school up and running mm-hmm. or build the mini courses that we're working on. Um, any Every single day that those things aren't taking place is not someone else. If you look at statistics, on the low side, there's a high rate of suicide still. There's a high rate of divorce still. There's a high rate of foster care still. There's a, there's all these different areas that so are the content. longer that we wait, the more likely we are to essentially. I mean, I don't people, want to say people lose those people, but lose those people, and because they're not getting served anyway, because we're the to the best of my knowledge, we're the only entity as of right now that serves anybody and everybody, right? A lot of the influencers serve a specific niche in high performing top achievers or uh, the personal development junkies and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the vast say, majority. I'd say rather than niching down to a specific demographic or yeah. type of person, what we've done is we've niched down to a season. So if you feel yeah, stuck in your life yeah. and if you feel like you aren't making the progress you want and you want more mm-hmm. control and uh, ability to build the life that you want, then you are ours. You are yeah. our people, essentially. Yeah, you're, yeah. Um, we, I, I love the misfits. Yeah. Was it with Steve Jobs quote? Um, you know, here's to the misfits, here's the crazy to, ones. It, yeah, here's to the yeah. misfits. Here's to the crazy one. That's us, right? Right. We're 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 about the for, the people that feel forgotten, the people that feel unseen, the people that feel unheard. People who have been told their whole lives that they're, that they're worth not, nothing. Exactly. That's you're my you're my people because that's me. That's me who too. I was. Oh yeah. And I refuse to let another single person walk that type of life out when we have the knowledge and the wisdom and the experience and the content and the and the tools yeah. to help you not walk life out that way. Yeah, I think I think one of the things that's really really important about us is that we, that we we don't try to come to you from a high horse. It might seem like that sometimes. Uh, you know, I'll say things because I can't <laughs> hold my tongue, and I'm I'm young and 23, and I say stupid stuff like in the podcast where I said, you know, people are ancient and stuff like that. I'm sorry for that, guys. I I just sometimes I think things are gonna be funny. And by the way, I you have to let that stuff fall off of you. He's referred to me as he he one day he said, dude, man, the people in their late 40s, man, they're like, you know, I'm like, dude, I'm in my late 40s. He's like, really? <laughs> yeah, I just I, I, yeah, yeah, forgive yeah. me for that. It's I'm I'm young. I, 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 sh- I shouldn't have said some I'm of the so proud that I've you said. actually just admitted it, the fact that you're young. Yeah, dude. Like I'm I, young. Young. I'm like I'm like i like most people when they're young, like I did. Like when I was young, I actually thought I knew everything. So yeah. Well, I, I, I th- <clears throat> if you recall, four years ago, I did think I knew everything, and then I met you, and then I everything about tried everything. to ignore everything you said for a few years and got nowhere, and then started to apply them in the last year, and I'm like, oh my god. I don't know everything, but he knows a lot. I'm gonna just learn as much. And as I don't I know can. everything. Right. I, I and I have zero problem asking questions of my mentors. For and stuff sure. All the way. For but all right, sure. moving on. 
Right, where were we? The driver? We just finished up the driver. So the driver is there to simply push you. They don't they don't care about your feelings. They don't care about whether or not you feel like you can do it or not. Right. They are there to basically be like a wine press where to get your potential to ooze out of you. You need that kick words. in the butt. It, it's a straight up kick in the butt. And again, your coach may have a driver in it. Your guide may have a driver in it. Remember, I told you early on that one or two people may actually serve for three or four of these at a time. Okay. Um, but the next one's the one of the most important um, people you need to have a relationship with, and that is yourself. Your inner you. Your inner you. You've got to have a, re- a healthy relationship with yourself, which means you've got to get to the point where you are talking to yourself using the belief system model that we gave you guys a, a week or so ago, I think it was. Yeah, a few podcasts ago, and then obviously if you watch our whiteboard lessons, you uh, we did something on the four stages of beliefs. Yeah. Do you have any limiting beliefs? Or, or you know, you could you may have heard of them as uh, life lies. Um, Sorry, I'm waving my grandson. Some people, uh, <laughs> some people tell themselves things. Uh, the way that you talk to yourself is very important. Yeah, I mean, essentially, that the the inner you, the the goal is to move you from a limiting belief through the process, all the way through a bridge belief, all the way to an empowering belief. The greatest person that will ever hold you back seriously is yourself yep i've definitely experienced that. right it's, it makes me want to punch myself in the face when i look at myself in the mirror i've had so many times where mm-hmm. I told you about this the other day I'll, I'll look at myself in the mirror i'll be like dude will you just step up what what is your problem what yeah. what is wrong with you just come on you, you you have the steps you have everything you need yeah do the stuff and it just drives me crazy <laughs> and i want to beat myself up a lot of times yeah. Um, and well, then I go to you and you're like, don't do that. It's okay. It's part of the process. It is part it's of the process. Yeah. I mean, you're going to make like, look, when you're, when you're building a relation, like most people have never intentionally built a relationship with themselves. Right. And when I say build a relationship with yourself, you are going to be able to be at peace with like, I'm a, all right. So I am five foot five. I am not a tall individual for the huge chunk of my life. I was like, I'm short. Everybody knows I'm short. Quit talking about I'm short. Like I'm a, you know, I bow up or something or do something stupid. I finally accepted the fact that I'm short, but I also have all this other kind of stuff inside of me that is so helpful to my life and my people around me and stuff like that. Like I'm, I'm a short me, guy too, by the way. I'm I'm like a solid like five seven. So I, on a good day, maybe five six and a half. That makes him average, but you know, hey, but it's beside the point. Uh, it's not average, but it's okay. Thank <laughs> you. <for that. laughs> what I'm getting at is, is you have to be a, you have to in some cases be at peace with some things that you can't change. I'll never be able to change the fact that I'm not tall. Right. Okay. I can change the size of my muscles or whether or not I'm growing them or whether or not they're shrinking or the size of my gut. That's why I I keep saying, I mean, I'm like, man, with this COVID stuff is over, I'm getting in the gym. (laughs) And I keep telling them I got a bow flex at the house. Come on over. Um, Excuses. Anyway, no pun intended. (laughs) Dude, you're too much of a driver, dude. You're going to be like, more weight, more weight. You're going to break me, man. Like, I. It has like a 200 pound limit. (laughs) More weight. Anyway. The inner you is so important because you have to be at peace with who you are, but you also have to be willing to be flexible with who you want to be. So if I want to get more muscles, I know I need to hit the gym. I know I need to eat right. If I want to grow uh, more stable in my marriage, I know I need to spend more time with my wife and be intentional about it. If I want to be a better dad, like so on and so forth, right? When you have a, when you have a good relationship with you, you accept yourself as yourself. You're authentic, right? You've, you've reached a level of authentic. These are things I'm passionate about. These are things I'm good at. These are things I'm not so good at. One of the things I know I'm not naturally gifted at is details, mm-hmm. right? So, and you brought it up before. You're like, dude, you really suck at details. I'm like, dude, I, I, I've already told you that. Like, why is mm-hmm. this a surprise, right? Yeah. So, but the two things that um, I know that you've mentioned before is, well, maybe that's why you can move so fast. Yeah. Well, I would, I would say it this way. I have a level of faith because my experience has shown me that in order to move something big, something heavy, something meaningful, you've got to have a level of faith that it's going to work out in the end. You have to have a, um, a desire, if you will, to let things play out. Let me ask you a question because this is um, – obviously, yes, I have been telling myself, oh, yeah, that's why Steven's able to do that, but maybe that's just a story I'm telling myself. Do you actually believe in your heart of hearts that I can move at your pace? Or, or do you think that I'm wired for maybe 80% of that and that's going to be enough in a different way? Like, I've always wondered that. Like, because I keep trying to move at your pace. So I, I feel like I I'm not wired I think, for it. I think it's the wrong question. Okay. <clears throat> I think you should never try to be someone else. 
right? So trying to move at my pace, yes or no, is irrelevant. I think I think what you should be striving for is to be as productive as you possibly can be and limit as many distractions. I find that one of the things that you struggle with most is distractions. Yeah, and a distracted. lack of focus. Yeah, you get distracted time, for sure. You know, and that's where you know I talked you, to you were just you lock yourself in a room for like twelve hours and nonstop you're getting things done. And I'm like, all right, I can sit myself down for fifteen yeah. minutes, knock something out, and then squirrel, and then you know I come and back I have those thirty moments. minutes and later. Just, but, just so we're clear, I have those moments too where I'm sitting, I'm literally typing, I'm writing content or whatever, and blog article, ebooks. I mean, any number of things that we've been creating, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I'll have a moment where I'll, my brain will just stop. Yeah. Right. And then, but you have to have enough experience and wisdom to know that, okay, squirrel. All right. Back to it. And, I, right. and I'll read my last and sentence I guess and I'll just keep going. I guess what I'm asking you is, cause I still struggle with that a great deal. Like when mm -hmm. I, when I'll have that squirrel moment, it'll keep me like away from my work for like an hour. Yeah. Like, like, or sometimes we we'll just get you a dog collar. Shocking. <laughs> no, but seriously, like I'm just I'm just curious, like like how much of that do you think is like because of the way that I am, or how much of that well, do you think me, I I'll with explain, discipline I'll explain and to you habit this way. I can So um, it's it's no secret. One of the thing I think one of the reasons that you and I get along so well is because I really feel like you are me 20 years ago. So you, but 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 I, I always so think I, that I you was, didn't I was, struggle with I that, was, right? I was geared to not to never not be in motion. But I was not geared originally to be so focused on getting things done, meaning uh, setting up a, le a, a, a to-do to list or a task item list and knocking stuff down. The reason I uncovered that that works, and which is we I've been telling you about, dude, get a list, check stuff off. Yeah, get so a you, list. Used, you used to waste time. I too? used to waste all kinds of time. I, I used to do like you do. I used to go work on the fun stuff. I wanted to go. I wanted to be creative. I want to go do the fun stuff. Like, mm. I, who wants to go take out the garbage or go for, you know, whatever? Mm -hmm. I used to be the same way. Now, what I do is I take the stuff I don't want to do and I put it intentionally in front of the stuff I want to do. So when I get to do the stuff I want to do, it's like a reward. Did you have to make that change before you were able to have some level of success? Um, I definitely made the change before before the quasi whatever whatever you want to deem a success. Um, it was part of the process of becoming successful. Got it. Right. So I do. So again, I do the things I don't want to do first. Um, we have a we have a slogan here that says "Do the hard work first. I think we even have a T-shirt coming out. I might even say that. But do the hard work first. Yeah. Or do the push-ups. Do the push-ups. Yeah. So if you do the hard work first, you do the push-ups. Then you get the benefit of having a nice chest. Right. Right. You get the benefit of being able to wear a T-shirt and fill it out. Right. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. It's the same thing with this, right? You you do the hard work first, and then the stuff you want to do, the creativity. Like I love mm -hmm. to create graphics and all kinds. Like I love creative stuff. Yeah. I like creating processes. I like when I say processes, I mean like strat life strategy stuff. Not right. me going into our pro project management software and putting this widget before the other one. I don't enjoy that. That's yeah. too much detail. But right. But I do the stuff I don't want to do first, and then I do this. Then I get rewarded by doing the stuff I want to do. So I have a sense of accomplishment as well as a sense of getting crap done. So I guess, yeah, I, I just need to learn how to, how to keep myself focused and disciplined because as in this season of life, mm -hmm. I, I also share that, you know, I don't really love details that much, like, but a lot of what I do yeah. in my current role requires a good amount of detail. A lot of detail. Yeah, which is hard for me because I'm wired to but not. But remember, like that. if we build it right now, eventually you probably I, won't have to touch it for five years. Yeah, and uh, you just reminded me of Rory Vaden's book, uh, Take the Stairs, yeah. where he talks <laughs> about that concept. I've recommended that on a previous podcast, guys. This is literally like one of my favorite success books I've ever read. I'm reading it a second time. You now. get to tell Rory that next week when, or uh, two weeks when you're when you're with him. Yeah, so. for sure, dude. I, I mean, <laughs> but seriously, I, I was blown away because. Yeah. Um, it, it's all about the concept of doing the hard work now and the biggest difference that he identified that is between successful people mm -hmm. and non-successful people is successful people do the things that other people don't want to do. And the, the truth is they don't want to do it either. They've just learned how to get themselves to do so it. So what did Steve Myrick tell me when I was 16 years old? Uh, when you were be 16? Willing to, be willing, be willing to, to do it. Do today what others won't so you can have tomorrow what others what don't. Was it, essentially, what was he won't. telling me? Do the hard work. Do the first. hard work. Yeah, and then I struggle with it for a decade. And then oh I, yeah, then no, I got busy. Me and too. I, and then once I got busy, I got going. And once I got going, mm -hmm. I made progress. Once I made progress, it's very similar to I've struggled with it for a decade. It's I've right. been I've been pursuing this stuff since I was sixteen. All right, so that uh, was yeah, our we, squirrel moment. We're gonna yeah come right. We back need to dive to the back to the seven relationships. <laughs> we were at interview. 
So again, you were we, t- we gained. You have a self. You have uh, an incredible level of self awareness and self ongoing self development within that self awareness. Right. Um, every skill that you have can be sharpened. Every blind spot that you have can be backfilled. Right. By knowing who you are and knowing what you're good at and having a really good dialogue with the inner you. So I don't. I don't get mad at myself when I make a mistake. I don't chew myself up and down. Maybe I need to stop doing I that. I just, I just like, oop, I made a mistake. What can I learn from it? Literally, my 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 inner dialogue is this: Oh, I made a mistake. What can I learn from it? Okay, and I'll literally. Whereas a lot of people would be like, Oh my god, I can't believe I did that. Everything's ruined. Uh, yeah. You know, I had one chance. You know, and, and it's the, it's the the stories that you're telling yourself. If you don't have a healthy inner you and inner yeah. voice, um, I advise you to probably check out some of our yeah. lessons on beliefs. That's right. The final one's going to be the gatekeeper. All right, Karen is my gatekeeper. We mentioned that on the last episode. You have to have someone or a couple of people that stand in front of people that want to get to you. Um, this is one of the things that I think has been a larger struggle as I've wanted to, to um, put myself out there more to try to help as more to help more people. In doing so, you're you're working with people and you're trying to help people who are in in some cases really struggling. Right, they may actually have a mental illness from time to time. And you want to help them, you want to serve them, um, but you're you may not be able to do that right in in the way that they need. A gatekeeper has the wisdom to say, "Hey, look, you can come talk. You know, you can come talk to or be around or whatever, and you're dangerous, right?" A gatekeeper has a sense of awareness um, and a sense of authority to say, "Hey, look, there's danger here or potential danger here," without the sense of abuse. Meaning, everybody that's trying to like you. A gatekeeper, think about like a guard shack, right? I don't know what a guard shack is. A guard shack is the building that sits out in front of a property, whether it be the military installation or somebody's. Really, oh, really nice okay. Farm. So, and, like, like and that, there's a guy out there. Yeah, the guy who before the gate is basically checking your ticket or whatever. He, yeah, he's like, are you, are you supposed to be here? Do I got you, you have a meet? You, know, you have a scheduled meeting. Like, I see. You, you can't just like you can't just walk into the White House right now and go have a meeting with the president, the vice president. It, anything, right, exactly. Right? There's, there's got to be there's a there's a check process, right? Yeah, checkpoint. That's what a gatekeeper does. Gotcha. Right. Um, gatekeepers specifically are paying attention to your inner circle, your your original boardroom. Once you communicate that boardroom to the people, they're trying to make sure that those chairs are filled by great people. So they're watching the people that are sitting in the chairs and they're also watching the people who want to be sitting in the chairs. Wow. So this okay. person is really just all about looking out for you. Yeah. So in they, in they, major, they would probably way. serve the role as like a best friend or yeah. – um, a significant other yeah. or something like that. As bad as I hate to say it, like I said, Karen, one of her, one of her, um, she she brings a lot to my life, a ton to my life. But one of the greatest things that she brings to my life is, uh, is she is a gatekeeper. Like she, every she single, is. every single person, she said that person will burn you. You need to remove them. They're not good for you. Every single stinking time, she's been right. Every time, one hundred percent accuracy. One hundred percent, crazy. She has some of the most insane intuitive abilities that I've ever seen, <laughs> seriously, because she's, like, protected stuff. Like, back when I was in that relationship a few years ago, yeah. uh, she was like, hey, this is not the one for yeah. you. <laughs> we we, we and both I, tried to tell you I that. know, and I was just like, no. But she has the mom thing. I'm going to make he it would, work. He wouldn't listen to me. It didn't. I got burnt. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that's serious. But that's, that's what a gatekeeper does. So, right. quick, quick rundown. The guide, the coach, the empower, the educator, the driver – the inner you, which means communication with yourself, and it's okay to talk to yourself as long as you're not overly answering on a regular basis, right? And the gatekeeper, okay? The outcomes that you want in life will only be as good as the people you surround yourself with, period. So you got to make sure that the people you surround yourself with need to be there. And because we've been doing so many shows on this specific topic, hopefully we're starting to drill it down Mm -hmm. okay so how do how do you get there all right what are the action steps this week so the action steps or the methods in which i do this is i kind of look at it like an extension cord okay if your electrical like your life is your electrical wire right i'm a construction guy so if you don't get this this analogy that's okay i'll I'll move on in a second okay if your life is like an extension cord you are the you're the lines inside of that 
if you're not insulated by the right people, then essentially you're exposed. Meaning, if there's a cut in electrical cord, everybody can get shocked. Okay, I have something you. that maybe can, people could somewhat relate to. Um, I don't know that this would really shock you. Construction guys will relate to this just fine. No, no, they will. But like, <laughs> you ever have an iPhone cable that just uh, that? You know how iPhone cables always tend to break and get the little turtleneck. You know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. but like, <clears throat> if it were to be cut open, obviously there's that wire there, and I don't think technically with that technology it would necessarily um, uh, hurt you, but it might. I, I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, not sciencey enough for that. So but in theory, enough. if you touch the wire, you know, if it would if it would shock you or something, that's what he's saying. Is it the 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 cord around that that actual part that protects you when you hold it, mm -hmm. the, the the cable, is the insulation that is is Which designed is to protect you. Yeah. Right. So you can either really so. And how do you do it? Step one, you assess where your relationships are at. We've we've talked we've been talking about this. We're scale of one to ten. Do they need to be here? Or do they not to be there? Okay. Um, you remove step two is remove the ones that you don't need or the aren't going to help you in any way, shape or form. And then step three is you acquire new ones. It's the same steps from the last episode. Mm -hmm. Assess, remove, acquire. acquire, recess, recess. I just oh, recess. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Assess, remove, assess, remove, acquire. Okay. If you do those three things, looking at your seven relationships, and hopefully when we when we through some of these archetypes, you begin seeing faces. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's my uncle, and yeah, that's, that's this exactly. guy. And, and, that's, and that's what you want to do. I think what it make, what it, the, the best thing you could do is actually make that list, right? Take the time to make the list. So the guide, the coach, the empower, the educator, the driver, the inner you, which clearly that's you, and the gatekeeper, Okay. Try to fill, try to get seven names or four names that can make up seven attributes or whatever, but try to identify who those people are and then strike up a conversation. Just say, hey, man, I just want to tell you how much I appreciate the fact that um, I always go to your guide and the fact that you're always helping me yeah. learn new ways and new stuff. And what if you have holes? Like, what if you have some of if those? If you have holes, you have assess, remove, acquire. There you go. Okay. Is, is, is that literally? I suppose, that it, I suppose in that case it would be assess and then acquire because if you don't, yeah, have it, and you, don't you know, and, and like I said, we're going to be, um, it's, it's, gosh, we're probably it's a, a few months out right now, but we're going to have a methodology where you can actually talk to our life strategist one on one, um, and it's not going to be like hand over fist money or anything like that. We're not, I'm not doing that to people. I refuse to do that. I just refuse. So, um, we got a lot of stuff cool coming. In the meantime, the easiest way to maybe even go through some of these questions is to actually email us at questions at journeyprinciples.com. That'll help you get your questions here, and we can answer them those way, that way. Or you can go down to the live video feed if you're watching us on YouTube and comment, ask your questions there, or just you know hopefully give us some, 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 some props if you, if you feel like we're doing a good job. Or... Uh, you can also go to uh, the podcast platform of your choice, Apple, Google, you name it. We're pretty much on there now. And you can also do comments and whatnot there to kind of let us know you're, you're watching, you're engaging, you're listening, and you're learning and making things happen. And uh, with that, I think we're close to the showdown. Yeah. We love you guys. We believe in you. You're amazing. Keep moving forward. We're here to help you make that possible. Until then, see you on the next time. Journey Principles. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. And please... If you don't mind and you enjoyed the Life Mastery content we're building, consider hitting the subscribe button and also hitting the bell so you'll be the first to get notified anytime we release new content.